Welcome to the Sparkle Podcast. I'm your host, Portia Franklin, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today. This is season two. We are in it. We are jumping in with the mindset series, and this is episode number three, where we're going to be talking today about the neurocycle, emotional intelligence, and how just seeing so much curated content on social media can cause you to have so many false like negative mindsets that say you're not doing good enough let's let's tackle that today i am so excited for this episode it's it's getting deep it's getting real this mindset series is something that i'm just completely geeking out on and it's just completely where i am in my life's journey of renewing my mind and finding out what's true and what's not true what have I believing? What have I been believing that's been holding me back and all the things? And I just want to share it with you because I believe when you and I share our testimony, it can help somebody overcome something so much faster. And so I'm here for that. I'm, I'm totally here for it. So yes, we are diving in. But before we do, I want to share a beautiful five-star review. And our five-star review is coming from Heather. Heather says, I love that Portia addresses deep-rooted negative mindsets that can go all the way at the subconscious level. When we invite Holy Spirit and the Word of God to in to expose those deep roots, we get lasting freedom. Thank you, Portia, for sharing your story on mental healing and encouraging women to sparkle. Thank you, Heather, for leaving that amazing five-star detailed review. We appreciate you. And I just want to invite you, as you listen, who could you share this with? And if you are touched by anything that I share and resonate with anything, please hit that five star and below leave a detailed review to let me know. It really, really does encourage me when you tell me how and why or what you heard that encourages you, right? So as iron sharpens iron, we are stronger together. So let's jump in to this amazing episode. And we're starting off with obviously the mind and there is, there's so many levels to our mind. And this is the part where it can get a little confusing and tricky. I had talked about in our last episode how things are, are very tricky and the way we see ourselves and the way we want to see ourselves and then the self-sabotaging subconscious level things that we do to just keep ourselves at the same thermostat set temperature. There's just a lot and lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of layers that go into having a healthy mind and mental health is something that is, you know, widespread topic and it is in effect to a lot of people. And so where this podcast is coming is is directly speaking to women. Women, I'm just telling you, women are the target. The enemy, which is the devil, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, is out to kill, steal, and destroy people. Now, why? Because he's after people, because people are living images of God. We have the, the spirit of God living within us. And so that is very, very, number one, it's controversial to even talk about that. Number two, it gives us authority on this earth. And like number three, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be God. He wanted to take the place. So for us to be walking around with the power of the Holy Spirit living within us, the power of God at our fingertips, the kingdom at hand, he will do anything to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, he's not going to do that blatant, like bluntly and be like, oh, I'm going to destroy you. No, he wants, he's a, it's a slippery slope my friend. It is a sneaky snake that is after you. And so it happens so vaguely. And it happens when we have memories that we don't remember. And those are like deep set traumas in our subconscious. And that's where the levels and where it gets really tricky. But on top of it, not only people, you know, he's out to kill, steal and destroy people in general, but women, women, woman, listen, you have the power to create life, (laughs) to create life, men and women together, the power to create another human, which carry on the next generation, right? And so why, why would he let you just live your grandiose life? right? If he was the one that wanted to be the the power holder, right? No, he wants to take us down and he's going to do it in any way. And the main way that he does it with men and women, I'm obviously talking to women, but he does it through the mind, through your mind. The battlefield will is in your mind. And if you are willing to do the hard work to do 
the things that need to be done to heal your mind, then it's going to be so worth it. It's really, really stinking hard. Okay. It's really hard. But here's the deal. You are so powerful when you take every thought captive and you hold it to the truth that is the word of God. And the truth is you are called, you are powerful, and you have a purpose to share your testimony that then helps and empowers somebody else to rise and shine for the glory of God, right? And the, the kingdom is at hand when you acknowledge. That's another whole like episode, to be honest. But <laughs> so going into that, did you know that we can go three weeks without food, three days without water, three minutes without oxygen, but not even three seconds can we go without thinking. This is how serious this topic is. And our ability to think, feel, and choose has the power of life and death and will determine the way we live our lives today. And like I've said it so many times, you've probably heard it before, um, what you think about, you bring about. But not only that, going a, a step further, what you think about, you speak about, and what you speak about, you bring about. And so what are we thinking about that's creating things that we're saying that bringing about results that we just are not excited about. So with that being said, a scripture that I did want to share with you, 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of one of power and of love and of a sound mind. We having the ability to think, choose, and feel. It's so powerful. And so how can I, questions that I ask myself, how can I overcome my self-doubt? How can I overcome laziness that's the undisciplined things that I know I need to do, but I'm not doing it, the procrastination? Procrastination. And what is the root of procrastination? Oh, it's fear. Fear of what? Fear of rejection, fear of success because of the mandate that it's going to put on me. All of the things. What questions do you have? And if you're not asking the questions, why are you not asking the questions? Right? Like, let's ask questions. Let's ask powerful questions to get powerful answers so we can live powerful lives. Right? And so my question is, what is the root? <laughs> How do I get to the root? And so with the neuro cycle, there's five things. So you want to gather, reflect, write, recheck, and have active reach. These just, I'm literally just going to hit the surface, but I am on a mission to heal my mind, to heal the things that have been holding me back, right? Like, how do you feel about your life? How do you feel about your thoughts? Are you thinking about what you're thinking about? And do you ever wonder, like, there's a pattern. I always fail or I always miss the mark here in this one area. Like, why is that? Have you stopped and thought? Or are you just like, oh, whatever, that's just who I am, right? So much of that lie is like, oh, I've just been doing that all my life. That's just who I am. Well, not necessarily because you're actually called to be successful in all areas of your life. And so if there's an area of your life that you're finding that you're failing or you're like falling short or whatever you want to call it, then is it worth to look at? Because you are actually an amazing human that deserves to have a winning spirit and a winning life. Like you deserve to win. You deserve to win. And so let's look at the cycle. <laughs> that we can break down and reconceptualize things and to have new outcomes. And then we're going to, we're like even going to talk about self-regulation, self-regulation, all, all of that, like in moments, there's cause and effect and everything. So like I said, I'm talking about these things, but I do understand that this is all surface. I do plan to like, I really want to go deeper and I actually want to have like a masterclass. I want to do something with a group of women. I really would love to have a group of women to do this with and go, let's freaking dominate these things and like put it into practice. So if you're interested, please DM me on Instagram and let me know if that would be something that you would be interested in, in dominating some things that have been happening that you are recognizing to be bad patterns, toxic mindsets. Let's freaking go after it. Okay, let's go after it together. If you're interested, I would really love to do this with you. So let me know. Step number one, is to gather. So we're embracing the toxic thought. We become aware. So, so many times there's toxic thoughts and there's things that we do that we are not even aware of. And these are called blind spots, right? So in the, the process of becoming aware, we can start to gather and embrace that toxic thought, habit or trauma, and 
this literally is neuroplasticity. Like this is your brain changing. This is like surgery. You are doing brain surgery on yourself when you stop and you think about what you're thinking about and you take hold of your mind and you do these things and you become so aware and you can take account and start to change your life with the way you think and what you think. Number the step number one is is embracing the toxic thought habit or trauma and really acknowledging and analyzing that. And then step two and three, you're going to reflect and you're going to write. And this is the process where you perform the surgery. And so you're processing, really thinking about the thing, you know, perform that mental autopsy and you're going to process, you're going to write it down. You're going to think about that thing. You're going to reflect on it. All of the details, that's the mental surgery part. It gets really, really deep, intentional, and you're focused on thinking about that thing, the thought the habit or whatever it is, which forces the conscious mind. So this step, when you write it down and you're processing it, this is where your subconscious mind becomes conscious. This forces the conscious mind and the non-conscious mind to connect. So this is where, you know, blind spots before where you didn't really understand or you didn't think anything was wrong, but people were like always telling you like, why do you do that? (laughs) Like you become aware of it. And so it comes up to the surface and then it's such a big deal. And this is something that my mother in love always celebrates with me. I tell her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just realized I had this revelation of myself. And she'll be like, please celebrate. Like this is such a big deal for you to be aware of that. Like it's such a big deal. And so I have learned to start celebrating these things that I'm like, wow, that's not normal. Let's look at that. (laughs) Right. And like, let's fix that way we look at that and way we think about that thing, whatever it is for you. So we then have the opportunity to recheck and actively reach. So this is where we can reconceptualize This is literally closing up and healing the brain. Okay, so we're doing surgery. We're opening up the brain. We are cutting open with the scalpel. We are then performing the surgery with reflecting and writing down, becoming aware of whatever it is. And then we can heal, close up that brain and let it heal with the reconceptualizing step. This could be like a long, 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 long topic, but like I've touched on it a little bit earlier, if you're willing to really go deep, become aware and actually not get offended when somebody tells you like, hey, that's not like a normal reaction or what you're doing is it actually is a red flag. If you can listen and like stop and like the immediate reaction of what we want to do is we want to get mad. We want to get offended and we want to be like, how dare you? How dare you tell me I'm whatever? Like, how could you? Right? Like, obviously, sometimes we just don't see things and that's where we have to live an unoffendable life. Like, and it's really stinking hard when (laughs) you just want to live your life and then people are telling you that whatever. Um, And it's not always people. It's like you can get offended with yourself and be like, wow, Portia, I can't believe you just did that. So this process of healing the mind and living a powerful life, it it requires you and I to not be a victim. It requires us to be strong and unoffended. It requires us to have a thick skin because if we want to change and we actually want change that actually requires you to be very thick-skinned very strong and emotionally intelligent and again if you're interested in going through this neuro cycle with me I want to have a master class I want to have a nine-week group of willing women who are like this is going to be hard but I'm willing to do hard things and I know I can do hard things (laughs) I tell my kids that and like that's part of our declaration. I can do hard things. And if you want to do the hard thing and like heal some parts of your life that have been 
not necessarily exactly the dreamy part. Like it's not been exactly dreamy like you want it to be. Let's let's go deep and let's do it because I want to take one portion. Maybe it's the way you react to your kids. Maybe it's the way you eat food. Maybe it's the way you're not exercising. Maybe it's the way you're looking at a relationship or how you're communicating. There's, you know, habits that are holding you back, whatever that looks like. There are so many. And like I said, it goes layers deep. This is not like something that you can tackle in a day. So if you are that woman who is ready for change and wants significant change that is long lasting, hit me up. I want to grab a handful of women to do this with a nine week master course, because this is something this is very serious and very near to my heart. So, I mean, I've come through so many areas of my life with this process and now I'm I'm facing a couple other areas, right? So we have will never arrive. And that I think that is the lie that so many of us in this world that we live in today is like so many people have this perfection and this curated content reel that's just like look at my life. It's so perfect. And you're like, oh, no, so good for you. Mm. Right? Like, oh, really? <laughs> it's not real. Right? Uh, yeah. Let's just live our best life and do the hard things. But moving into being able to like, okay, so say now we are aware of these things and we're aware, we're in tune with what's happening in our life. And this is where we can start to self-regulate and having emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions and to handle interpersonal relationships judicially and empathetically. So emotional intelligence is the key to both personal and professional success. Being emotionally intelligent requires us to be aware and in control of our emotions, right? With self-regulation, there comes empathy. You become aware of emotional intelligence, self-regulations. There's empathy. You become aware and you start to watch people's emotions and you just become really aware of what is happening and how people are feeling. There's just this sensitivity of like, okay, I can see that you're frustrated. I can see that you're sad or whatever that looks like. And I am aware. How am I responding to this, right? As adults, we can become frustrated with situations, right? <laughs> Um, like right now, my daughter, this self-regulation, emotional intelligence. <laughs> my daughter just opened the door and was standing there so patiently. And I look over and I'm recording the podcast. And so this is actually the second time or the third time that I've been interrupted through creating this episode. And so I have to... <laughs> self-regulate. I have to check in with myself and make sure that I understand that I have a family. I have to breathe and just take a deep breath and go, okay, we can do this. It's all going to come together. And clearly, if there's resistance, I need to persist, right? So... <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, I've had plenty. We all have plenty of opportunities to have a moment of self-regulation. And this becomes, again, in all of these moments, like where we're working to be our best selves, we are, you know, self-development and all of the things. Because if you're listening to this, you're like me and you like to listen to self-development and things that are going to make you better, right? But there is this really slippery slope where you can become, fall into this perfectionism. And this is something that I fell into for a really long time. I was under this impression that if I didn't do things perfectly and if I didn't have them done the way that I see them exactly, then I couldn't do it at all. Like it was this black or white thinking, like in or out, all or nothing, very, very toxic. And I think this is something that comes with achievement. It comes with a lot. You can see it probably in network marketing. You can see it in probably corporate America as well. But there's just this thing where it's like, oh my gosh, I need to do this thing. But if it's not perfect, I can't do it. Then there's this procrastination analysis paralysis. There's the whole thing. And so if you cannot self-regulate and understand that 
perfectionism is not real. And what you see on social media where all of these people are living their best life and they're traveling and, you know, they have all the success, but they don't have any hiccups or, you know, whatever. It's not real. They're not showing you the whole story. And so you and I both, we can get caught up in this idea that, gosh, it's not working for me, you know, and it's not looking the way that it looks for them. And so why would I even try? So there's just this really, and it's intertwined. So we have to self-regulate. We have to understand that there is a process and we can be present and we can take really messy action to have progress. And that is like, done is better than perfect. Yeah. Done is better than perfect. I've said it so many times, but living in the moment, living in the present, like especially if you're parents, like man, it can get really messy as parents. And if you're working and all of the things, like it can get really messy. And that idea of the perfect Proverbs life is like, you know, yes, we will shoot for the Proverbs 31 life. We will shoot for the the highest, ex- most excellent life. However, if you fall short, it's okay. Like, it's not going to be perfect peaches and cream every single day. Your house might look a mess and that's okay. Like, there might be something happening that (laughs) took you away from cleaning the kitchen fully, right? And yes, we can get to it. We can get to it. There might be clothes that still need to be put away. Let's let's not beat ourselves up with the idea of being perfect for the Instagram shot. Like we don't need to do it for the gram, okay? We don't need to do it for the gram. So yeah, with all that said, perfectionism is not real. So take a deep breath and just enjoy your life. Don't worry about saying or doing things the right way, quote unquote, if you could see my air quotes. Just be present and do the things. Have fun. We've got to remind ourselves, and this is where we self-regulate. Why am I doing this? This goes back to like the neural cycle as well. Like we have to stop. We have to stop ourselves in the track of the toxic mindset or that toxic thought of all or nothing thinking. Like we have to stop and go, no, 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 no. Like what is the truth? Why am I doing this? become aware and rewrite the story, right? Reconceptualize and go, you know what? Done is better than perfect. I'm going to take messy action and I'm going to live my best life now because this is what I am called to do. I'm called to teach my children how to be amazing citizens and powerful (laughs) adults, right? Like, so we are raising them in the way that they should go. And it doesn't look perfect every single day while we're doing it. I, you know, whatever your calling is, whatever that looks like for you, be present and just enjoy and breathe like breathe it's gonna be okay and if you did something today that got you closer to the goal that vision that you have in your mind I think I shared that before like having that ideal I did share it in the last episode having who you want to become if you did something today that got you a little closer to that vision you are winning so celebrate celebrate yourself and just have that reflective practice okay today was a rough day like let's be honest let's let's talk about it and like sit down with your spouse or whatever or with yourself and write it out where'd the wheels come off today <laughs> where'd the wheels fall off what where did it get really really messy like what were the challenges abc like what happened and how how did i handle it what i didn't do what i did do and where did the wheels fall off where were the challenges X, Y, and Z happened and I didn't what? Like, where was I at? What did I need in that moment? Did I not eat enough? Did I not drink enough water? And it made me short in temper? Or is this just a pattern and I need to figure out how to address what's happening and what else what else do I need to support what's happening? Like this is a toxic habit and I actually need to go to work to change it because this continues to happen. Say you want to get up early and you continue to sleep in and you continue to wake up and then be in a rush, rush, rush because you chose to sleep in an hour longer than you wanted to because you know if you wake up early, you can plan your day better and you can be on schedule with the kids and all the things, right? So what is the one thing that continues to happen 
happen that puts you back. It could be a pattern like that. Like I've experienced that so many times. Like I know when I get up early, it is like so dreamy because I can plan and I can prepare and be ready for when the kids do wake up and then we're on schedule. And But I know that if I wake up late, then I know that I'm going to want to sit down and get my Bible or my journal or read something or track whatever I'm doing and it sets me back and then we're starting homeschool late and then after that we're like eating lunch late or we can't finish our lesson because we started late and it's lunchtime and blah 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 so what is that thing I know that's something that I'm heavily focused on is that so yes we got to clean up the mess because it is going to get messy and we pretty much have to stay proactive every single day to continue this process of self-regulating and then also like having the kids like we have to co-regulate so we self-regulate and then we co-regulate i'll give you an example my children have like have these moments where they get frustrated with each other and if i was an unregulated parent that came in which i used to be i used to be like a fly off the handle yelling like i'm so thankful I have an opportunity to do it over because my poor children the first time around as a young mom just not knowing any better. I had some really toxic habits in the way I was parenting back then. And so today I can take a breath, understand that I am an emotional, intelligent human being. Actually, I'm an adult and I can help these children regulate themselves. And so we can take a moment, like leave the area or whatever we need to do, and then we can talk about it. I can say, what happened to your brother? What did you do that made him upset? Or what did you do that made her upset? And we can go through this scenario. We can talk about the situation and then we can act accordingly, right? Like apologize, take accountability. Yes, you threw his stuff on the floor that made him upset. Well, that's not what we do around here. So let's address that. Why did why did you do that? Were you frustrated? Okay, it's normal to be frustrated, but it's not normal to throw things. So we're going to need to take a deep breath, right? So these conversations that I now get to have with my children because I've taken the time to understand emotional intelligence and now understand self-regulating, I get to co-regulate with them. I get to help them be powerful, emotional, intelligent human beings because I've taken taking the time to understand that. So that's just like an example literally today (laughs) that I had with my kids. I'm like, okay, awesome. And sometimes there's times where a child does not have the ability, they're building skills and we help them. And then there's sometimes where it's like, well, that was definitely out of line and you just, there's a spanking coming. You know, like there's a time to get stern and there's a time to teach. So there's discipline, there's teaching, right? So we have to be aware of where we're at with those kids and ourselves. Like we have to discipline ourselves. Like we have to discipline ourselves too. And so that hurts sometimes. Like, yeah. (laughs) All the things. So with that all being said, raise the standard. I was having a conversation with my daughter and in life, there's a lot of different people in life. And I'm going to just close out this episode with this. So we've already talked about perfection and all of the things. But in life, things are not perfect and life can get hard. But there are ways that we can get through life powerfully, and we are called to raise a standard. And so in Isaiah 59, 19, it says, So as the result of the Messiah's intervention, they shall revertently fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and put him to flight. For he will come like a rushing stream, which the breath of the Lord drives. So with that being said, the spirit of the Lord is in us. As a believer, we have the power and we being that are called to raise the standard. And so everything we're talking about with this mindset series, it is it is a choice to live a life where we take captive, bad mindsets, toxic, negative mindsets that are causing us to do things that are not, you know, lifting us up, not raising the standard, right? And so if we acknowledge the fact that, yes, the spirit of the living God lives in me and the spirit of the Lord 
comes to raise a standard. Now, if you know that, and if you're listening to this now that you do know that, you are called to raise a standard. And so there's a lot of people in the world, even in church and in your work, that it's okay for them to come and like gossip or whatever, and it's okay for them to act a certain way cool, live your life. But as believers, I was just having a conversation with my 15, 16 year old now, amazing. And we were having a really powerful conversation of how we find ourselves in situations where we are called to raise the standard. And it's frustrating. It can feel, and if you don't have the right mindset around it, it can feel victimizing. It can feel offensive. It can feel all the things negative. Unless you know you're called to raise a standard, then you understand the call and you you understand the assignment. And so you act accordingly, right? But as we're talking and I'm like, she has conversations with people and she was sharing with me a conversation that she was having with somebody. And I said, you know, ultimately in relationships, you will teach people how to treat you. And this is us knowing our worth, knowing that we are valuable. And if we continue, if we let people treat us a certain way, they'll continue to do it. Like if it's negative, like they'll just continue to do it because they know you're not going to say anything. However, if you know that you're called to raise a standard and you know you're worthy of being valued and loved, then you'll teach them how to treat you. And so if they bring drama to you or if they bring gossip to you, you can you might offend somebody if you raise the standard in that moment and go, well, did you think about this? Like if they, she was sharing something that was brought to her and she was like, well, you know, if I was in that person's situation, I would, I would be a little upset too. You know, if you blah, blah, blah. So, but the person on the other side, I don't know if they took it well, right? But where my daughter was sharing truth, like, hey, maybe maybe if you look at the other person and understand the frustration or what they went through, maybe you would have empathy and be able to say, you know what, my bad, I maybe didn't do the right thing in that situation and where my daughter was just trying to bring truth right like not trying to hurt nobody's feelings but just hey here's a perspective that maybe you didn't think of the other person kind of shut down so where I'm going with that is like if you know that you're called to raise a standard now it's going to be hard you're probably not necessarily going to want to do it all the time but if you're not obedient in the small things And where God says that we are called to raise a standard. And in this world, it's fallen. And there's people that don't understand how powerful it is when the kingdom is at hand. And so if we know that we are to raise a standard for the kingdom, then if we don't do that in the small things, how are we going to be trusted in the big things and like be promoted? You know, so in every opportunity, if we know that we're called to raise the standard, why don't we start right here in in our territory, our mind, and raise the standard and become aware and do the hard work and all of that. So I guess it's just like all of it to say, are you willing to raise the standard? Are you willing to raise the standard for the kingdom? Because God has called us to do it. And it's hard. It's not easy. It's not easy to call somebody out and tell them that they cannot treat you like that anymore because you're raising your standard. (laughs) And you will not accept anything but excellence, right? Yeah. So another topic, (laughs) but it's just, yeah, I'm really, really, really passionate about that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if it has resonated with you in any way, please hit that share button. Oh, and I didn't mention this. But there are some free mindset resources in the description. So grab those free resources below. And if this has been helpful for you in any absolute way, please hit that five star. It's the yellow stars below. Just scroll down and hit the five star. And then if you hit write a review, you can tell me in the review box how this affected you or what you thought about it or all the things, right? Share your experience from this episode. I would so appreciate it. And with that, it's a wrap, my friend. Today has been amazing. This has been such a a deep episode, but again, it's the surface. It's just the surface. So until next time, I will catch you in the next episode. Have an amazing, amazing week.